Life is getting very busy and challenging. One side you have work pressure, boss yelling at you. You're supposed to send me that report like five hours ago. Just let me alone. Excuse me? Please, let me alone. My conference room? Now, I cannot call it. Oh, yeah. Your exams, fighting your internal demons, and on the other side you have family immediate and extended family expectations and you are the pressure cooker in between. What is it, dear? An electronic bedpan? Really? It's a pressure cooker. My nephew gave it to me for Christmas. There's a screw loose. Oh, poor boy. And if you don't manage the pressure, one day you go boom. We all go through stressful situations and if we do not manage it well, our bodies and minds are prone to diseases such as blood pressure, stroke, heart attack, diabetes and depression. None of these is what we want because when you get them, life gets incredibly challenging and difficult. Don't trust me? Ask or see someone who has these. Come today. Still pretty smoky. Worth it. I told Turkey we're making cookies and Carl is out of town. Elliot, with his diabetes, it's the only time he gets to eat sweets. Stress. Let's talk about stress and how you can manage it to lead a balanced life. In this video, let's dig a bit deeper into what science is telling us about how we can manage stress so we don't explode one day. Now, make sure you watch the entire video because I'm going to give you a free tool at the end of this video and you would only use it if your brain actually understands why your brain needs this tool. Look man, you already got enough chemicals and bullshit in your head anyway, alright? Your brain is fried. Cortez, I'm serious. I need my fucking pills. Look, nigga, you tripping. I'm out. Otherwise, it is just going to sit in your garage like an old six string guitar you have never learned. Also, at the end of the video, I have included a free guided practice session on how to use the tools to get instant relief. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to Success Science where we unlock the secrets to achieving your full potential and living a life of health, wealth and success. Hi, I'm Dinesh. Like everyone else, my life is not a walk in the park. Indeed, I would say it is an ordeal in the ocean. Welcome to Paizak. I bet most of us are in the same boat with our lives. The reality is, <laughs> that is life. And we have this one boat and we must be the best sailor. Jack Captain, Captain Jack Otherwise, we will drown. In the past, whenever I had a stressful week, I waited for the weekend and watched movies, had a ton of alcohol, ton of junk food, jumped back into next week. Least I knew I was destroying myself in this process. I was destroying my brain and subsequently my body. You know, we are like a spinning top. We balance work, family, kids, boss, traffic, neighbor, bank, an asshole, friend. And in this process, our bodies are stressed and they release a stress hormone called cortisol. Now, between cortisol production and the event itself, there is something else that is happening, which is sort of automatic for most of us. Hmm, what is it? Let's get a bit deeper by doing a thought experiment here. Imagine your boss or your teacher or your parent is yelling at you. And at that point in time, the first thing that happens to you is your breathing. It gets shallower. This sends out a signal through your brain and through to your adrenal glands just above your kidneys to produce adrenaline. This triggers a flight or fight response. Your brain makes a split second decision whether to run away or fight and sends this decisive signal out to your sympathetic nervous system, allowing your body to perform that responsive activity. So. If it's a tiger or your boss, you run away. If it's your mom, you start arguing. Now, if you fight and win, you will feel good and happy ending. I win! I win! I'm a lawyer! That's my job! That's what I do! This is a short-term stress response, which is positive, like exercise, run, gym, etc. But 
If you cannot win your boss, then your body will release more and more cortisol, the stress hormone, keeping your body and mind at a highly activated state. You breathe faster, your heart beats faster, your body tries to divert resources to fight, which ultimately leads you into a chronic state that damages your body. Now, in our modern day of stress busting model that we just spoke about, my model at least, this is exactly what we are doing. When we have a stressful week, we end up doing high dopamine activities that is driving our cortisol further up so we are high in cortisol all the time and this leads to pressure buildup and one day boom. so now let's see what does neuroscience shows us on the other side of the page because for everything there is a positive side right the other side is obviously a relaxed state which is governed by your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, this is a state where your body, brain, and your mind are all in a relaxed state. Let's do another thought experiment. Imagine sitting on the beach, witnessing this beautiful sunset, fresh, mild breeze, oceanic smell, few kids playing at a distance. You won't think of fight or flight, but you just want to sit there and relax. You want to be there forever. Now, pay attention to your breathing. It slows down. You take deep breaths, relaxed state, and it's beautiful. This state is colloquially referred to as rest and digest, or feed and breathe. Most of us don't know. In this state, your body slows everything down, your heartbeat, your breathing, and focuses on digestion of food or sexual function. I'm sure no one can have sex when a tiger is coming to attack them, right? Go, Richard Parker. Go. Go on home, I'll leave you alone. Or with their boss calling them. Now, one quick note, before we go any further ahead, alcohol, smoking, junk food, all produce too much cortisol and will destroy your parasympathetic nervous system. And this puts you in a permanent state of stress. As you get old, this gets worse. So, not good. Now, life is all about balancing these two sides between your sympathetic nervous system that is triggered by external stimuli and parasympathetic nervous system enhanced by internal relaxation processes. Now, the big question, how exactly do we train to do this? When your coworker says something you don't like, how do you not activate your sympathetic nervous system but instead respond with your parasympathetic nervous system? So you're more cautious and respond in a rational way over triggering a fight. And one thing I always get from people that it is easier said than done. Well, you have to train and there are absolute benefits in doing that. Now, why is training your brain important and what does it do to us? Recently, I've read this book, The Awakened Brain, written by Dr. Lisa Miller. Fantastic book. She's a renowned professor of clinical psychology and education at Columbia University. According to her, there are two ways we focus our attention. One is an achieving awareness and the other is an awakened awareness. Achieving awareness is where we focus so much on a particular task or an event or a movement or an incident. Now, in this process of focusing, trying to do the task or thinking of an incident, let's say your boss told you off or you don't like something that happened to you or you're hitting a roadblock in your business or life. Now, you keep thinking about it. You cannot do anything about it in that point in time, but you just ruminate over it. And the more you do so without trying to find a solution out, you go deeper and deeper. Now, in this process, the neural networks that is helping you to think deeply of this particular incident gets stronger, which means you can go even deeper. And this quicksand triggers so much cortisol and draws all your body's resources, making you go into a deep state of depression. Once you get there, your neural networks are so strong, it is so hard to come out. Now, what's on the other side? An awakened awareness, where your focus is broad, very similar to sitting on the beach, a mountain view, or stargazing, or meditating, sitting in the temple, chanting a prayer, singing, dancing, and so many activities that help you focus on the broader things in life. Now, according to Dr. Lisa Miller, brain scans of people who regularly practice any form of spirituality, that is so-called awakened awareness, has revealed to have 
thicker prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is in the front part of the brain which processes information from this movement and helps you demonstrate traits such as creativity, empathy, knowledge sharing, leadership, listening, resilience, planning, strategy, executive decisions, action taking, etc. So it makes us uniquely human. People who have this section damaged cannot make proper decisions, they get angry and cannot have empathetic connections, friendships, the relationships hurt and so on. On the other hand, her work also has shown thinner prefrontal cortex for those who are diagnosed with clinical depression. Now here is the kicker. Her patients who started embracing spiritual practices has started developing thicker prefrontal cortex and ultimately we're doing better in lives. So what's this telling us? The tool to balance stress is in our hands. We must train our brains to identify the stress trigger point and slow our breathing down. That way we do not activate our sympathetic nervous systems in a prolonged state. But it is not easy if you have not done the required training every day. All you need to do daily is as soon as you wake up and use the toilet, have a sip of water, sit in a lotus position or in a comfortable position, close your eyes and relax. Think that you're floating in the stars or sitting at the beach enjoying the sunset. Then start taking deep breaths at the count of five. Pause for a second, then breathe out slowly. Now repeat this as many times as you can. In yoga, this practice is called pranayama. If random thoughts come in, just tell your brain to appreciate the beauty of the universe or the nature and continue taking deep breaths. Now, let's do a practice run. Close your eyes, sit in a comfortable position. Focus on your breathing, slow it down. Imagine you're on a swing, gently swaying in the vastness of cosmos, viewing the beautiful starry universe. Or think that you're sitting at the beach or watching the sunset, whatever you'd like. Think about a lovely mountain top with a valley view. Take a deep breath at a count of five. Five, four, three, two, one, pause. Breathe out, five, four, Three, two, one, pause. Now pay attention to your cheekbones, shoulders, hips. Just relax them all. Let go of everything and just enjoy the lovely view that is in front of you. Whether it's a mountain, whether it's the beach or the valley, the sunset or the universe full of stars the moon, the Milky Way, whatever you'd like. Breathe in, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Breathe out, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Breathe in, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Now, slowly open your eyes. This exercise should have relaxed most of you. Now, the more times you do this during the day, the more you would be activating your parasympathetic nervous system and stay at a relaxed state. As you practice this more and more, your prefrontal cortex is going to get thicker and you will start making better decisions in life, take better actions, have better empathetic connections in life. Additionally, you must be mindful of what you shove into your mouth as well. Junk, oily foods, smoking, alcohol, they are all the same. They all do the same damage at the same intensity. So 
steer away from them as much as you can. Now, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. Subscribe to see more practical application of science-based tools for our overall health, well-being and success. Until next time, please take care of yourself. Peace and love.